so your car doesn't start. Is it doing this? Or is it doing that? Well, it's gonna make a huge difference on what parts need to be replaced. You're either gonna need these parts or these parts. Let's get into it. These are some of the most common parts that are gonna give you a no start condition. And you can get all of these at 1AAuto.com. Typically, when your car doesn't start, people automatically think you need a battery. In actuality, you could need any of these parts. Assuming your battery is okay, let's take a look at a vehicle that has a problem of a no crank, no start. It's important to know when your vehicle doesn't start, the difference between a cranking and non-cranking no start. If you call a professional, one of the first things they're gonna ask you is whether it's cranking or not. If you have a vehicle that's not cranking or not turning over, no start condition, it's just gonna be clicking or it might even chatter or nothing at all. When you go to click it, it's just dead completely. We checked out the battery. Everything's good with that. Now we need to check out the starter. Every vehicle has a starter in a different location. Most of them are underneath the vehicle near the bell housing of the transmission. A quick and easy way to test if it's a starter is take a little hammer, give it a tap while someone's turning the key. If the engine starts, something was loosened up in the starter and you're just gonna need to replace the starter. It's only a temporary fix if it starts up. Here's the starter motor and here's how it works. You first need a ground which is grounded in the case. So with the bolts that attach to the block of the engine, that's how it's grounded. And then you need a battery positive feed, which goes right here. So there's a cable that comes straight from the battery, goes right there. And then you need a switch power that's right here. So when you turn the ignition switch to the cranking position, battery positive comes to here, and that's what engages the starter. And when all that happens, a gear right here comes out, spins the flywheel, and that's what turns the engine. We're gonna do a little bench test to show you how this works. This represents the battery positive right there. You wanna make sure it's not touching anything else. It's just going on that one stud. And then the negative, it's going to the case. I have a switch here. It's gonna go right there. And this is gonna to attach to battery positive. Right here. I have a little switch. So when I push on the switch, that's gonna send the battery positive down to that little terminal and then the starter motor is gonna engage. So here we go. You see how that works. Another way to check a starter if the hammer doesn't work and the starter's not engaging, what you can do is take a test light, hook one side to ground, and see if there's power going to the starter, which there is in our case, and then touch that terminal where it needs to be switched on, and then have someone turn the key. And if it lights up, you know the power is getting to the starter. The starter is the problem. Now let's talk about the alternator. Now this is a little bit trickier. It's gonna give you a dead battery condition. So you may charge the battery and think you're okay two days later and your car won't start again or truck. Or even worse, you replace the battery and two days later it won't start again because the alternator is not charging the battery. While the vehicle's running and the belts are turning, that is what is charging the battery and maintaining the battery. So if the alternator is not doing its job, the battery is just gonna get weaker and weaker and eventually the car won't start. While the engine is running, you can always check the voltage. If it's charging less than 13 volts, the alternator is not performing properly and it's gonna to need to be replaced. So those are the basic things you wanna check if you have a no crank, no start. Start with the battery, the starter, and the alternator. Check those out. Now let's move on to a cranking no start. When you have a cranking no start, the engine is actually turning. It's spinning, the starter's engaging, the battery's good and you can actually see the serpentine belt moving. So the engine's turning, it's just not catching. Now there is one exception, a vehicle that cranks slow. Now you know how fast your vehicle cranks and if it sounds like it's about half the speed it normally is, it's probably a battery issue where the battery's either not charged properly 
or the battery is weak itself and needs to be replaced. If it's over five years, you're going to have to replace it, or if the battery has been drained too many times, it's weak, it's not going to come back to life. You just got to put a new one in. The basics for an engine to not start is you're going to need fuel and you're going to need spark. If you don't have either of those, it's not going to start. Let's talk about fuel, probably one of the more common reasons why your vehicle won't start. Here's a fuel pump assembly or a fuel sender. There's a level sensor on here. So that's something to keep in mind. If your vehicle is not starting, maybe you're out of gas. The level sensor could be stuck. Keep that in mind before you go replacing parts. Now let's talk about the pump side of it. There is a sock filter on the bottom that potentially could clog up causing some issues and you have the electric fuel pump right here. You're gonna need power and ground going in here and that's gonna get it going pumping the fuel up and to the engine. In most vehicles, you can actually hear the fuel pump kick on once you turn the key on. And it goes for about two to three seconds. Now, it's gonna be a little bit easier if you have someone near the fuel tank listening for that pump while you turn the key on and off. Underneath the vehicle, you have the fuel tank right here and somewhere in the middle is where the fuel pump is located. If you're suspecting a fuel pump, what you can do is take a rubber mallet, just like the starter, give it a tap while someone's cranking it, and that might loosen up whatever's going on in the fuel pump and send some fuel to the front. If it starts, that's good. That means you know that there's something going on with the fuel pump itself and it's gonna have to be replaced. And if you have a fuel pressure tester, it's a good idea to check the fuel pressure at the fuel line or the fuel rail. There should be a Schrader valve and you're going to have to check for the specs. Every vehicle is a little bit different. So that's the fuel side of it. Let's move on to spark. For your engine to run, you're going to need spark to ignite that fuel and you do that with a spark plug. To get the energy for the spark plug, you have a coil that's going to send the energy to the spark plug igniting that fuel. So if that's not working right, your vehicle's not gonna run. Typically, your vehicle's gonna give you some warning signs before the vehicle just doesn't start because of a spark plug or a coil. It may run rough for a couple days. If you neglect it, eventually it won't start. Unless you have a coil pack that looks like this where they're all integrated into one, if this coil pack fails, the vehicle's not gonna start. Now we're gonna check for spark, and how we do that is with a spark tester. We're gonna put this in between the coil and the spark plug and then try to start the engine. If this lights up, we know that spark's at least getting to the spark plug. Now if you see that lighting up properly, you know spark is getting to the spark plug itself. It's a good idea to take the spark plug out, take a look at it, see if it's all caked up. There could be some gunk on it and just causing it to not work properly. Or it could even be soaked in fuel and it's just the spark plug needs to be replaced. And remember, spark plugs are a maintenance item. You want to check your owner's manual. Make sure you replace these at the correct intervals. You don't want the spark plugs leaving you stranded. Now there could always be additional things. You always want to check all your fluids, check your oil, make sure there's nothing going on there. There's hundreds of different items that could cause your vehicle not to start, but these are the most popular. And if you need any of those parts, make sure you click the link in the description, head over to 1AAuto.com. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos.